What's up, YouTube? Shalom, Bear Nation. It's Bear with BearIndependent.com. You guys know by now that that is the place that you need to go. Click on the store. Send an email to Hami Biscuits and say thank you for running the store. It's awesome. We love all the stickers and the patches and the t-shirts and the bear facts and the thumb drives. You're doing a great job. Okay. She told me to tell y'all. Now I've told y'all, so we're good. Shameless promotion. Bear, I hate you. You keep throwing out all this blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know what? Unfortunately for y'all, uh, there has to be a slight element of business to this because it costs me a good bit of money to be able to do this with y'all. So buy a sticker, buy a patch, buy a bear fact. They save lives. Buy a t-shirt. They're cool. You can't buy this t-shirt there. This comes from survival prepping for normal people. But uh, you could buy one of my shirts if you wanted to. If you don't, you don't have to. Whatever. Uh, excuse me. We've been uh, addressing questions from viewers on YouTube today and posting these in a series of, you know, episodes, I guess you'd call it. They'll post whenever they post. Here's the deal. We talked earlier about debt and then we talked earlier about community. And it has reminded me of a conversation I had with a brother about enabling fruitlessness. And so there's two things I want to talk about. Enabling fruitlessness and pouring yourself into others. The first, pouring yourself into others. The only finite resource in life is time. That's it. You can make more money. You can find another wife. Not that I want to. You can have more kids. Not that I want to. You can move. You can buy more cars. You can plant more trees. You can burn more firewood. You can eat more chickens. You can drink more coffee. But you will never get even one second of your life back. So, your time is your most precious resource. Where you spend it matters, and where you spend it is indicative of what you value. Meaning, and where I'm going with this, is when people spend their time on you, or spend their time with you, you ought to be thankful that somebody sees enough in you to spend their time, their most precious resource, something that you can never get back. And at best, you could only hope to inadequately compensate them for. They spend it on you. And so when people pour themselves into you, you would do well to remember you're not that special. I can say that because I'm not that special. And there are people that pour themselves into me and I go out of my way to make sure they know that I love them and I thank them for doing it. Because they make me a better human being because the effort they put in to me. So when somebody does that for you, Bear says, you should tell them how much you appreciate it and you should actually appreciate it. Thank them for the effort that they have made to pour themselves into you because if you're pouring yourself out on others, you're draining yourself. Now, how you get filled up again is beyond the scope of this video. I've addressed it elsewhere, but I'd say for me, it's pretty simple. That comes uh, from my relationship with my Messiah and my Creator. It comes from my family, my kiddos, my wife, my friends, my tribe, people that I love. And doing meaningful things that speak to my sense of purpose, that fulfill me, that are in service to the kingdom. So when somebody pours all that out on you, 
recognize the blessing and thank them for it. Now, as you pour yourself into others, we must be careful that we are not enabling fruitlessness. Fruitlessness meaning that somebody is not bearing fruit, that the investment that you are making of your time, and in some cases money, and in some cases energy, into somebody or into a household is not bearing fruit. They're not being good stewards of your investment in them. And at some point, there's a cutoff. I can't tell you where the cutoff is. Hell, I don't know where it is myself most of the time, other than I usually get fed up. Gets up to about here. And then all of a sudden, there's a conversation that needs to be had. We should pour ourselves into others. But we need to make sure that we stay filled up. As I just discussed. And we need to understand that we should not contribute to other people not bearing fruit. We do not want to enable. We don't want to be enablers. We want people to grow. We should meet people where they're at. We really should. Messiah pulled people out of ditches. Meet them where they're at. But shame on us if we keep them there. That's the thing. Shame on us if we keep them in the ditch. That's not the point. People should be better for knowing us. Long-term macro better, not short-term micro better. And there's a lot of issues that you could throw money at. But you'd be better off throwing wisdom and discernment and energy and instruction and reproof at. And we often fail to do that because it's easier to just shell out a few hundred bucks and call it good. And the problem with enabling fruitlessness is those people that you need to grow never do. They never get out of the liability column and into the asset column. Which means that your return on the investment that you're making into these people with your blood, sweat, tears, time, energy, and money never pays off. And so there's definitely a dichotomy here. There's definitely a push-pull here. Pouring yourself into people and enabling fruitlessness. Lastly, I guess I'll say this. I'm very mindful that everything is for a time. There are seasons to life, right? Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season. I've said it before here many times. This is for a season. I don't know how long this will last. 20 years or two more weeks. I don't know. When the father taps me on the shoulder and says, you're done, you're on to the next thing, I will go. This is for a season. Relationships can oftentimes be for seasons. We ought to remember that. We ought to plant and reap. Plant well, reap well. You reap what you sow, right? Sometimes that relationship of you pouring yourself into somebody only lasts for so long. And it's painful when that relationship has to come to an end. People move away. People fall in and out of love. People change their mind. People are just people sucks because you're like man I poured myself into you and now you're gone but there's somebody else out there that needed that person that you were pouring yourself into to move to make way so that they could come along and you could pour yourself into the next person 
and the next person and the next person. And so while I know it's easy to get jaded and it hurts, it doesn't mean you quit doing it because there's people who need you to do it. You just haven't met them yet. And it matters, it matters in the big scheme of things, it matters. Lives are changed, souls are saved. Generational curses are destroyed because people take the time to pour themselves into others. And so, to the unsung heroes out there, thank you for pouring yourself into others. And if nobody has ever said thank you, I thank you for all of humanity. We need people to pour themselves into other people. We just need to do it in such a way that we're not enabling those who aren't being good stewards of the blessing that's been presented to them because they can't or they won't or they don't know how. or simply because the circumstances change. Take that and run with it. There's something in there for at least one of y'all, I can feel it. And I just felt obligated to my creator to say it. Click the baby bear, y'all know what to do. Shalom, y'all. <laughs>